All right, so last week, when you guys were given a polar coordinate, polar coordinate <clears throat> is similar to plotting an X and Y on a re normal rectangular. You start in the middle. We don't call it the origin. We call it the pole. And then the polar axis is like the same as it would be uh, as the X axis. You're going to be given an R value, which is a directed distance, and then a theta. So you find the angle you're talking about, and you move out that many rings to get to the point. If it's positive, you go towards the angle. If it's negative, you go away from it. And again, if this is all new to you, you need to watch the 9.5 part one video. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna convert. We're gonna go from polar coordinates to x, y, rectangular ones, and vice versa. So I want you guys to understand how this is all related. If you have an x, y, right? If you have an x, y, you start at the origin, your x value is your left and right, correct? Your y value is your up and down. We always, this is going to create a right angle. And then your r is like the hypotenuse. So when you have a polar coordinate, it's the exact same concept. You're just starting at what's called the pole. And that you're going to be given an angle. So you'd find the angle. And then the directed distance is what you're given. You're given the hypotenuse. So then you would figure that out. Question? Uh, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to, when you're given this polar, you're going to convert to X, Y. Or if you're given a rectangular, like here, you're going to convert to polar. We're going to go in both directions. All right? You are not going to be given any of these formulas or anything, but you will understand as soon as we do this, like, oh, I already know this. So let's go to the next here. Okay, this top part, you guys already know. Everything up here and here, you guys already know. We've talked about this since chapter four. On an XY, your normal XY coordinate plane, <clears throat> you go left and right is your X value, up and down is your Y value, right? Those are the legs of your, hypo of your right triangle. Then to find the hypotenuse, your R, it's r squared equals x squared plus y squared. It's just your Pythagorean theorem, right? We also know these trig functions. We know that if you have an x and a y and an r, your tangent is y over x, your cosine is x over r, your sine is y over r, correct? We already know that. So here is the conversion. And this isn't anything that you guys are unfamiliar with. If you are given a polar point and you go to rectangular, this is the formula. And some of you are like, oh my gosh, how do I memorize that? Guys, think about this. The, whoops. The cosine of theta, we already know, is x over r, correct? Mm -hmm. If I said to you guys, can you go ahead and solve this formula so it says x equals, what would you do to both sides? You would multiply by r, correct? So you would get x equals r times the cosine of theta, which is exactly what this says here. So we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not finding anything new. You're just algebraically moving stuff around. So if I said to you, okay, well, the sine of theta is y over r. How would you solve this for y? You multiply both sides by what? r. So it'd be y equals r times the sine of theta. So when you're given a polar coordinate and you have to go to rectangular, you're going to use these two little conversions, these formulas. Super easy. When you're given a rectangular, you're given an X and a Y, you have to find your R value first. Well, how would you do that? If you're given an X and a Y, how would you find the R value? What does it say? R squared equals what? X squared plus Y squared, all right? So you find that. And then how do you find the angle that you're talking about? Well, you got to find the tangent. You put the Y over the X. This is really, really, really simple, I promise. We're gonna do like eight examples, and then you guys are gonna be like, oh, okay, this isn't bad. So let's look at this. Most of the time, it'll tell you to convert from one to the other. Sometimes it'll just say convert, so you have to know what you're looking at. But this says to convert the point to comma pi to rectangular. So you're starting off in polar. So first thing you need to do is say, okay, when I have two and pi, they're giving me r, and they're giving me the angle that we're talking about, the theta, okay? So we're going to convert to x and y. So I'm going to write x equals r times what? 
What's the formula? R times what? What does X go with? Cosine or sine? Cosine. cosine. So it's the cosine of theta. And then the Y part is going to be your R times the sine of theta. Everybody with me? Okay. So in both cases, guys, what is the R value? Two. two. Okay. So it's two times something. So now I need to know the cosine of theta <clears throat> and the sine of theta. Well, I have my unit circle here. The angle that we're talking about, our theta that we're talking about, is pi. What is the ordered pair at pi? Negative 1, comma, 0. So remind yourself, the first value is your cosine, the second value is your sine. So when my x equals r times cosine of theta, I'm going to say it's 2 times, what is the cosine of this theta that we're talking about? Negative 1, good. And then I'm going to say for the y, it's 2 times the sine. What is the sine of theta? 0. And then we now do the multiplication. So the point that we are talking about in a rectangular coordinate system, what's 2 times negative 1? Negative 2, comma, what's 2 times 0? Zero. 0. That's it. That's all you have to do. When you're going from polar to rectangular, you need to figure out what angle they're talking about. So you find it on the unit circle, write down the X and the Y, and then you just throw it in here. Like here, same thing. <coughs> this is my R value, and this is the theta we're talking about. So my two equations are X equals R times the cosine of theta, and Y equals R times the sine of theta. In both cases, guys, what is your R value? The square root of 3. Okay, no big deal. The square root of 3. And now you have to figure out what the sine and the cosine are. Well, what's the angle we're talking about? Pi over 6? What is the ordered pair at pi over 6? Square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, right? So remind yourself if you need to. The first one is your cosine. The second one is your sine. So my x value is going to be r times what? What is the cosine of pi over 6? Square root of 3 over 2. Good. And then <clears throat> my y is going to be 1 half. Perfect. And now we just multiply, guys. So think about this. This is the square root of 3 over 1. So when I multiply numerator times numerator, what is the square root of 3 times the square root of 3? Positive 3. And then what's 1 times 2? 2. So it's 3 halves, comma, what? Square root of 3 over 2. Perfect. Is this like, oh my gosh, this is so hard? No, this is easy. A second ago, you guys would have no idea what I was talking about, but it's really not difficult, I promise. Let's do some more. All right, what did they give us? They gave me my R value of 4 and then theta. They told me this angle to look at. If you want to go ahead and say what the ordered pair is at theta, perfectly fine. What's the ordered pair at pi over 2? Zero comma what? One. Okay, that's my cosine. That's my sine. If you want to get that started, that's fine. So x equals r times the cosine of theta, and y equals r times the sine of theta. In both cases, again, guys, what's your r value? Four. Good. So I'm going to say four times. What is the cosine of pi over two? Zero. And then 4 times, what is the sine of pi over 2? 1. So when we multiply, 4 times 0 is 0, and 4 times 1 is 4. There's your point. So what this is saying is 4 comma pi over 2 on a polar coordinate is in the exact same spot as 0 comma 4 on an xy. The same points in space. All right, last one, and then we'll go the opposite direction. <clears throat> this is my R value, and this is my theta. So if you want to go ahead and tell me what the ordered pair is at pi over 6, what is it? Root 3 over 2 and 1 half. Okay. What about if they gave me a negative angle? How would I figure out where that was? you got to go the opposite way, right? If they gave me negative pi over 6, will you find out what positive pi over 6 is and then go the other direction from the polar axis? Good. All right, so I have x equals r times the cosine of theta, y equals r times the sine of theta. 
Again, guys, in both instances, what is your R value? Two. And if you need to remind yourself, go ahead. Just write a little C and a little S. What is the cosine? <clears throat> what is the cosine of pi over six? Square root of three over two. Good. And then what is the sine? One half. And so you don't make any mistakes, guys. Put this over a one, just so you see. Okay. Well, if I multiply two over one times root three over two, what happens to your twos? They cancel. So it's a square root of three, comma. What happens when you multiply 2 over 1 times 1 over 2? It just becomes 1. And there is your point. How do we feel? It's not bad, right? All right, let's move along. Now we're going the opposite direction. We're going to convert the point 2, 2 to polar coordinates. Now there's going to be a couple different ways that you guys like to do this. I'll show you <clears throat> one way that I'll do this first one, and then I'll show you how I usually do it. But this is an X and a Y, right? Okay, so let's think about this. I have to find, what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find R and theta. So my R value, well, R squared is X squared plus Y squared. Do we have the X and the Y to use? Yes, so just plug it in. So R squared equals two squared plus two squared. So r squared equals 4 plus 4. r squared equals 8. I don't want r squared. I want just r. So what does r equal? 2 root 2. Now, somebody last period said it's plus or minus, isn't it? Which I agree. I totally agree. I'll show you why you don't need the plus or minus here in a second. But your r value, guys, is 2 square root of 2. Now I have to find the angle they're talking about. So how do we do that? Well, we're given an X and a Y. Let's find the tangent. What is the tangent of theta if I put Y over X? If I reduce that, guys, what do you get? One. So now we have to think a little bit. We gotta go to our unit circle. We have to say, okay, where on our unit circle could I take the Y value, put it over the X, and get positive one? There's two spots. Pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Because square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2 is 1. Negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 is positive 1. So which one do we choose? Well, think about the point 2, 2. If I were to plot the point 2, 2 on a rectangular coordinate, I would go over 2 and up 2, correct? What quadrant is that? The first quadrant. So which angle are we talking about? Pi over 4. That's why you don't need the plus or minus because <clears throat> you'll be able to tell based upon where the coordinate, the, the x, y lands, what quadrant, you'll be able to tell. I usually plot the point first just so I know what quadrant I'm looking in so that I don't have to think, I don't have to worry about which one am I picking. That's what I would do. All right, so now we're going to convert. This is my X. This is my Y. Do I already know where this point is? What angle are we talking about? Pi. Where's negative 1, 0? It's pi. If you get a quadrant angle, it's real easy because you know what it is, but <clears throat> we don't have to look at that now. Let's look at R. Let's find R first. So R squared equals X squared plus Y squared, right? So R squared equals negative 1 squared plus 0 squared. So R squared equals 1. So I take the square root. So what does R equal? Square root of 1, which is 1. So your R value is 1. What angle are we talking about? You guys already know. What angle did you tell me it was? Pi. Now, if you didn't see that, if you're like, oh, I didn't see that negative 1, 0 is right. I can see it on the unit circle. That's fine. Take your x and your y. So tangent of theta is 0 over negative 1. <coughs> Where, guys, could you take the ordered pair and get 0 as the tangent? There's two spots. Where would it be? Right here and here, right? Well, where, where is the one negative? So there you go. 
Make sense? All right, let's do the last one. You guys are doing great. Convert the point. I'm, first thing I'm going to do is find out where that point is. Where's negative 1, 1? Negative 1, 1. It's in what quadrant? Quadrant 2. So right now, guys, you know exactly where on the unit circle you have to look. It's going to be in quadrant 2. So we're going to, this is my x, this is my y. So r squared equals x squared plus y squared. r squared equals negative 1 squared plus 1 squared. r squared equals 2. So what does r equal? Square root of 2. So your r value is the square root of 2. Now where, what angle are we talking about? Negative 1 once. Well, let's take our tangent of theta is y over x. Where in the second quadrant, because we already said this is in quadrant two, right? So where in the second quadrant would I take my y over my x and get <clears throat> negative one as a tangent? Three pi over what? Four. Good. Now, if you didn't look to see what quadrant it was in, you guys would get three pi over four and seven pi over four. Then you would go ahead and plot the point and say, oh, we're talking about the one over here in the second quadrant. So it's root 2, comma, 3 pi over 4. Those are the exact same places in space, just different coordinate planes. All right, last one. This is my x, and this is my y. Let's find our r value first. So r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So r squared equals negative 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared. What's negative 1 squared? 1 plus, what's the square root of 3 squared? 3. So r squared equals 4. What is r equal? Yep. r equals 2. Perfect. So how do I find out what angle we're talking about? Well, I need the tangent of theta. I take the y and put it over the x. So negative root 3. And before you guys start guessing and all that stuff, what quadrant are we looking at? Where is the point negative 1 square root of 3? Well, from the origin, I would go left 1, and the square root of 3 is positive, right? So it's going to be somewhere in what quadrant? I know it's in quadrant 2, so I can cross off all this other stuff. I don't have to look at it. I know it's in quadrant 2, so that helps now. Now I've narrowed down the ordered pairs. I need my tangent when I put the y value over the x to be negative square root of 3 over 1. Could that ever happen at pi over 2 or pi? No. All right, so don't have to worry about that. Where else can I cross off? Why 3 pi over 4? Because there's good. When you put those on top of each other, you're going to get 1. So you've narrowed down the entire unit circle to just two ordered pairs. Now you might have to do a little guess and check. I'm going to, this is my x, this is my y. I'm going to try 2 pi over 3. If I take the square root of 3 over 2 and divide it by negative 1 half, we keep change flip, right? So square root of 3 over 2 times negative 2 over 1. What happens to your 2s? They cancel. So I'm left here with what? Negative square root of 3 over 1. Isn't that what we were looking for? So what's the angle we're talking about? 2 pi over 3. So it's 2 pi over 3. Does that make sense? All right, good. It's really, really easy, guys. <coughs> if you're going from one to the other or vice versa, you just have to, you got to think a little bit. That's it. So what you guys have for homework, I put together a little, I don't know, I call it a quiz prep, whatever. It's the 9-4 stuff where I give you the parameters, you plug in from negative 1 to 4 or whatever in both equations, graph it, draw your little lines to tell you the direction, and then stuff from 9-5, plotting the points and then figuring out going from polar to rectangular and vice versa. Then what's the 9.5 web assignment? I took it off. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's no 9-5 web assignment. We'll go over the quiz stuff tomorrow, and then um, your quiz will be on Thursday.